I know that it has been quite a long, intense lecture so far, guys, but this is the last part of the lecture. I now want to discuss how do we, as the auditors, gather the information about the client's entity, about its environment and internal control. How do we get that information? We've seen what we need about the entity and the environment, and we've seen what we need to know about internal control, but how do we get that? Because remember, we are not testing anything at this point. We are just trying to understand. We're just gathering the information so that I can pick up risks, but I'm not doing any testing. So how do I get this information? Well, you might remember when we looked at the information system, it had some procedures for us to gather the information as the auditor, and it said you can go and inquire with the personnel who are involved in the initiating, the recording, the processing of the information. So you can go and inquire with personnel about the information system or you can inquire with personnel about the control activities or about their risk assessment procedures or about their monitoring. So we can ask people really everything we need to know about internal control provided those people are involved in internal control. So that would be just your normal people in the business. But what about management? So inquire with personnel, inquire with management and governance of the business so that we can understand a little bit more about the control environment. Because they're the guys who are responsible for that. Or we can maybe go and inspect, so I'll add you now another one, inspect a code of conduct so that we can understand the control environment a little bit more. Is there a code of conduct telling staff how they are expected to behave in order for controls to operate effectively in this business? So that's me at this point asking a lot and looking for internal control, but uh, while we're here, let's carry on. What else could we do for internal control? We could maybe inquire with internal audits if they have one. Because if they've got internal audits, internal audits job is really to make sure that the controls within the business are working. So ask internal audits. What else could we do instead of just inquiring and inspect, we could observe the controls being performed. Or well, if you remember, we saw in the standard and in the information system, you could actually do a walkthrough so you can actually see how it's done. Here's the control, let me see from start to finish how it gets, how the transaction goes through these controls. So I can observe controls. I can go and look at the security within the business. Do they lock things? Is there an alarm system? Just so that I can understand a little bit more about their controls. Okay, let's move a little bit away from internal control now and consider everything we need to understand about the entity. So how can I determine what the financial reporting framework is and additional regulations. Well, maybe I can go and expect, inspect the financial statements to understand what the applicable reporting framework is and any other regulations. What about the industry practices? I can go and look at industry requirements and regulations so that I can understand a little bit more about what the industry expects of them. What about understanding the strategy of the business? Again, I can go and inquire with those charged with governance or the management about the strategy within the business and the performance management tools. 
the accounting policies, once again, looking at the financial statements. Is it a group? Is it an individual? Maybe I want to go and look at publicly available info about this company and whether it's a group and the details of that. So I can go and look at specific documents, I can inquire, I can observe to learn more about this. And then procedures I can do, I can do analytical procedures to understand the changes or to understand if they are competitive in the market. I can compare their results to a competitor's results To see where is their market share, to understand this industry, so I can do analytical procedures myself. Guys, if I was the auditors in the prior year, I can lean on my prior year knowledge of this customer and or client to know more about it and use that in the audit this year. So guys, there's lots of things we can do as an auditor to gather the information. But the reason why I've put this after the information is so that you can think about what you're trying to get information of and then come up with the procedures. So it's important to not just go, these are risk assessment procedures, inspect, observe, inquire. Think about what the information is that you're trying to understand. Think about all of those Elements, those six elements we wanted to understand about the entity and its environment. Think about those five components of internal control that we want to really understand and then we can come up with the procedures to find that information. Alright, it's quick. I want to go into ISA 315 to the beginning of the requirements now where we look at the risk assessment procedures just so that you can see they are literally listed there for you. In ISA 315, first of the requirements, risk assessment procedures and related activities. So let's go straight to paragraph 13. Risk assessment procedures, the auditor shall perform risk assessment procedures so that we are able to identify and assess the risks of material misstatements and then to design further audit procedures because of the risks we've identified. Okay, that's all happening in this whole planning stage. We've got to perform the risk assessment procedures in a manner that is not biased towards obtaining audit evidence that may corroborate or towards excluding audit evidence that may be contradictory. So guys, this is new to ISA 315 and it's saying because the audits are coming under such scrutiny at the moment <laughs> we know the practice is not looking great a, a change has been made to the standard to say you know what actually happens is that you get comfortable with a client you start to de develop the procedures that you know you're going to get the evidence for and so you're not actually using your professional judgment and skepticism in trying to find out where there could be misstatements. You're just trying to work along where you know you're going to get the evidence that you need. So when you do these risk assessment procedures, you don't be biased as the auditor. You're not looking to find the path to get the evidence that you know is going to back your procedure and exclude the path that you know might contradict your procedure. You need to be unbiased in saying, I need this information, what is the procedure I'm going to do and I'm going to pick up any risks along that way. Okay, so the concern is that auditors are becoming biased because they know they can get the evidence if they follow this path and they know that they might not get the evidence that they want if they follow another path. And now 
when you do your risk assessment procedures, if you know that if I do it this way, I'm not going to get the evidence that I'm looking for, you must do it that way. Because you need to prove then, why don't I get the evidence that I'm looking for? There might be a problem here, a risk here that I've just always overlooked because I know it's going to contradict what I'm doing. It must. We need to be skeptical. If information con contradicts what we're doing, it shows there's a problem. All right, so in doing our risk assessment procedures, we've got to look at this company without a sense of really knowing what's going to happen and try and find risks as they come about. So what are the risk assessment procedures we can do? Inquire with management and other appropriate individuals within the entity and if they have an internal audit function, it's a second procedure. We can do analytical procedures, comparisons with prior, comparisons with competitors, comparisons within the financials and observe and inspect. That doesn't help guys. If you say observation or inspection as a risk assessment procedure, you will get zero marks. You need to say what are you going to observe, what are you going to inspect, what analytical procedures are you going to do, what are you going to inquire with manager about. And that's why I've highlighted all these application paragraphs because they tell you what you need to go and inquire about, what you need to do as an analytical procedure, what you should observe and inspect. If there's other sources of information, you need to use that. So information you get from your pre-engagement activities, use that if that's going to help you. And if you were the previous auditors, use your information from prior years to assist. So let's go and have a look at the application paragraphs starting right up top here with A11. So A11, your risk assessment procedures. I'm really just focused on highlighting the actual procedures. So it says use information from multiple sources within and outside of the entity. So interactions with management and internal audit if they have. External parties and regulators if that's applicable. If there's any public information like press releases or investor group meetings, use that information. Inquires with external legal counsel if they have. Okay, if they have automated tools, but again, we're not looking at computer information system, you can use those. Your inquiries. Inquire with those charged with governance over the oversight of the preparation of the financials. Inquire with employees who initiate, process, or record transactions. Inquire with in-house legal counsel on litigations. Inquire with marketing and sales about strategies. So you see, I explain what we are inquiring about, not just say inquire with these people. The risk function about risks. IT person about, about any changes in IT. Analytical procedures. So you've got to perform analytical procedures to pick up inconsistencies. So what do you do? You've got to do ratios, you've got to do trends. And it says you can use non-financial and financial information. So here's an example. You can look at a comparison, to, comparison of sales to square footage of the selling space. So where you've got a bigger selling space, you expect sales to be higher. So this is maybe for divisions um, or different branches uh, as part of an analytical procedure. Another one, compare the salaries to the number of employees. So again, in different divisions or branches, if they've got more employees, you expect salaries to be higher. Or compare it year on year. So last year they had less staff than this year. You expect salaries to be less last year then. Okay. You can go and observe segregation of duties. You can observe passwords being entered. You can inspect internal documents, records, strategies, business plans, reports prepared by management. You can go and look at the premises 
are the external documents if they are available. You can go and observe management's actions to see if that control environment is actually a good one. From past audits, I can go and look at if the misstatements were corrected when we identified misstatements in past audits. Were any controls identified in past audits that were then fixed? Okay, so anything from prior audits I can use to help me. So you can see there, guys, lots of ways to gather the information. If you ever ask the question on risk assessment procedures, you need to ensure that you describe the procedures. All right, so let's go and have a look at a question. Class example two, it's not a question that requires reading time and writing time. It's a simple distinguish between whether this is a risk assessment procedure or a test of control. I know we haven't done test of controls yet, but we've now done risk assessment procedures. So by looking at that procedure, you can either say yes, it is a risk assessment procedure or no, it's not. So guys, take five minutes to do that question.